Hello, everyone, and welcome to the next episode of Kiss My Wax Remastered. I am one of your co-hosts, Jason Herndon, and with me, as always, is... Andrew Scambetti, here again. Joe Lalich, here again. Welcome, gentlemen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And before we get started, don't forget to hit that like button if you're watching this on Facebook. And if you're watching on YouTube, hit subscribe, click on that bell icon, so that way you're notified when we post new episodes. But it doesn't end there. Get some Kiss My Wax and Kiss My Collectible swag over at Click T Shop, clickwithak.com. Purchase our t-shirts. But if you want to become an unofficial member of the show, head on over to patreon.com slash kissmycollectibles to become a Patreon member of our show. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. Good job, Andrew. Thank you. On the Patreon, though, we haven't been talking about it much, you know, because it really just kind of has been there and been set up. But you've got a few different donation level levels. You've got a dollar, five dollars, twenty five, a hundred, which is way out of the of the realm. But you know, if you feel froggy, but just for as froggy. little, <laughs> if you feel froggy, for as little as a dollar a day, we're gonna start a doing a dollar a month, not a dollar. I mean, a, a dollar day. a month. Can you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> this isn't a feed the children's commercial. You will for, pay for me for, for thirty dollars. For as little bro. as thirty three cents a day, your donation <laughs> could help feed all of these children. Uh, yes. <laughs> so for as little as a dollar a month, you're gonna have access to. Um, we're we're gonna start doing these um, exclusive videos just once a month. Uh, short little things. We don't even know exactly what the content's going to be yet. But it's going to be a bonus episode. That's right, a bonus episode of some sort. Uh, so uh, you know, like I said, a li- as little as a dollar a day. Patreon dot a dollar a month. Patreon dot com slash kiss my. You're collective. never speaking again. You're God just, dang, you're no done. Kidding. You're 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 I done. You're 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 done speaking. You're gonna cut your microphone off. So what are we doing today, gentlemen? We are gonna go back to kiss my wax and revisit the 1979. Studio album Dynasty. Kiss My Wax Remastered. Kiss right. My Wax Remastered. Yep. Very cool. And that's it. See you guys later. We hope you enjoyed the show. Good night. <laughs> Send us your dollar a day. We'll be all Send very pleased. Your dollar a day. <laughs> we'll, we'll be. Well, hey, but before we before we get started on this, I you know you guys are a little bit older than me. When did you when did Dynasty first come into your wheelhouse? I'm curious. Uh, for me, it was as far back as I can remember. I, yeah, I had it. I had it probably. Off the shelves. I don't remember buying it, I, but I just it was sure, surely a part of my childhood. Um, and and this and Alive Two are probably the two records, and maybe Hotter Than Hell are the two records that are indelibly burned into my memory as as a child. I played the hell out of this record. Played it yeah. all the time as a kid. Same here. I can remember exactly where I was when I did get da- Dynasty. Um, it was for Christmas. I was at my grandparents' house. Uh, in West Tennessee, um, was it, Danny was, Dabs there? No, Danny Dabs was not there. Dang. But the the problem is, I don't remember the year, so it, it had to be at least 1980. It would be my guess. My guess would be I got it Christmas of 1980. I got this one with a bunch of other classic cassette tapes, which I still have. This one and Rock and Roll Over, I since have lost the covers. You know, probably 30 years ago, I lost these covers. But I remember having the tape, and I remember being, I remember having a Walkman, and I had the tape with me in a library somewhere. And I remember listening to I Was Made for Loving You, 2000 Man, and Sure Know Something, like on repeat. And, and because I really didn't understand like B tracks or like B sides or, you know, album filler tracks, I just kept rewinding those three songs because those were the ones that I knew. Like I didn't, there was no hmm. reason for me to ever hear "Dirty Living," but I, if I watch a Kiss video, if I had it unplugged, it would be, it would be been on there. You know, the, you saw the "I Was Made for Loving You" and "Sure Know Something" videos. I just never, it, those songs were never on my radar until much later. But I remember having this. Um, Interesting. Really, really, really I, early in my collection. I just remember sticking the thing on my record player and playing it over and over and over and over again. But I did that with every record. So Yeah. Yeah, this one was on my turntable all the time, for sure. Yeah. This and alive too, for sure. Yeah. I just yeah. I don't I don't remember when I got I know but when I got the actual vinyl of it, uh, a nineteen seventy nine issue, just great story. I um I was at a flea market and I just was looking and this guy had all this kiss. And I was like, man, and I was like, it was in great shape. I opened it up. The aura form was in there. The poster was in there. And, and, and I was like, wow, this is, this is awesome. And then, like, I'm looking at the record, and, like, and I pushed the record back in the rack. I mean, I did end up buying it. And as I pushed the record in the rack, this guy comes walking out from the back. And I look at him, and he looks at me, and I go, you're Gary Danko. 
And, yeah, and it, Gary Danko. And it was Gary Danko, <laughs> and he remembered me. So that was cool. So I bought it that day, and it was uh, it was very, very cool. It was at the Route 70 flea market in New Jersey, which I just heard isn't there anymore, unfortunately. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, b before we move on to you know specifics of the record, yeah. so um, let's offer up some opinions. I'm curious. What do you guys think of Dynasty? What each, you know, is it? Something is it a record you love? Is it a record you hate? Is it a record you're just on the fence about? I mean, what do you think, Joe? What do you think about Dynasty? It's an interesting one for me. Um, I wonder where the line of nostalgia, and it isn't isn't it like this with everything in life? You wonder where the line of nostalgia versus really good stuff, you know, how where where that line is drawn? Because obviously, I've already talked about the nostalgia that's you know embedded in this record for me, but. Um, I think Dynasty gets a bit of a bad rap, if I'm to be honest. You know, everybody says, oh, this this was Disco Kiss. And, um, you know, and they kind of dismiss this record and say this is like the last, maybe that maybe the, it, this was the, the, the first record of the end or the beginning of the end for the band. Right. And I, I just dis disagree. I think there's some great rock songs on it. I, I think arguably really the only song that that has that disco thing to it. Um, is I was made for loving you, you know. On the rest of the record, uh, it just doesn't. Dirty I'd throw "Dirty little, Living" yeah, in there too. In there. Yeah. yeah, maybe some of the orchestration kind of stuff going on in "Dirty Living" for sure. That funky yeah, bass. but but what's that? And, that funky bass and yeah. and consistent kick drum on you know even on the yeah. down beats, you know down yeah, and up yeah. beats, you know. So. Yeah. So okay. So let's say those two are disco tracks. The rest of them, I just don't see it. I think it's a great great rock record. Otherwise, you know, if I could quote Ace. Ace, he says, I don't really think we, we made any drastic change. I think uh, the song you're referring to as disco is, is really rock disco. But the majority of the album, I think, is rock still. I, I like the record, but I yeah. wonder, I, I, I'm going to echo what Joe says. Is it nostalgia or is it actually good music? Because I love the time period. And obviously I went back and, and looked at the time period years later. But this is one of my favorite time periods. I mean, just something about this time period was magical. It was the return of Kiss. I just remember watching that TV commercial over and over and over again. And then walking in the, in the fog up and through the city. And you're just watching that. And you're like, oh my god, this is so cool. And you, you're seeing these larger than life costumes. I was like, oh, like as a kid, I was like, oh my god, this is the coolest thing. So just remembering all the things about that time period. A lot of that it was... A lot of that was some of the first visual media that I saw of Kiss. You know, that commercial's on the Kiss My Ass tape, but before yeah, then I had yeah. the Tom Snyder interview, and it's all it's all about this, and you're hearing about how big the stage was and how over-the-top everything was, and then you're reading pages of, of it in C.K. Lent's book. And so um, I really, I think I might enjoy the time period more than I enjoy the actual music on the record. But that's not to say I don't enjoy the music. I still love Sure Know Something, Magic Touch, I Was Made for Loving You, 2000 Man, which even though it's a cover, it's far superior to the Rolling Stones version. Um, Hard Times is a great song. So I wasn't. I don't think the G material is as strong as the Paul material on this one. But um, but listen, I, I, I like it. It's definitely still high up there on the albums list. Well, it definitely, for me personally, falls you know, pretty high up on the list. Uh, and I understand... Joe, what you're talking about with that nostalgia thing, because it was so ingrained in us when we were young. But sure. I, I don't view music. I try not to view music in, in that manner because I, I don't I don't necessarily subscribe to the oh, I used to like that, but I no longer like that. I don't I don't I don't understand that to me, because if something was important to me for some reason at some point in time, even if it's bubble gum or something like that, I mean, it meant I something no to me. I no longer like bubble it, gum. Okay. So, you know, even if it's bubblegum music and stuff like, I mean, that's any, it meant something to me. And it, so this record, I love every song on it. I, when I get in the car, I have no problems putting it on and listening to it from beginning to end. Yeah, I do. I, you know, I, I love the record. I would put it up probably, you know, in my top 10. Yeah, for me sure. too. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, yeah. I mean, but I, I guess more what I'm talking about is, is it objectively good? You know what I mean? Can you and I take a look at it and go, is it objectively good or can, is it so tinged with nostalgia? And I'm not saying that I, I don't like it anymore because of whatever reason, like it's gone out of fashion or whatever, because I still love this record. But it's hard for me to 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 take that veneer of nostalgia off it and really look at it objectively and go, 
is this good? I, I'll ask my girlfriend sometimes. I'll say, hey, look, do you, is this, is, is this, does it sound dated to you? Because I can't tell because it's so ingrained in me. I can't tell if some music sounds dated or not, you know? I, That's I an interesting that. perspective, interesting too. Point, yeah. But, but wouldn't anybody look at anything that they've grown up with like that? I mean, w- would they? I don't think that, you can. That's what I, I said earlier. I, yeah. I, I don't think so, though, because I still don't think that the I don't think the Beatles sound dated. I don't think some of that Wings material sounds dated. I don't think Queen sounds dated. But you're a fan. Um, I'm a fan. Bring of somebody. Of bring brain. somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Bring somebody in who's never heard that before. Bring it. Bring a. Bring a. You know, a 12 year old that's never there heard are, that stuff. There are channels about that on YouTube. I mean, there's kids. One of one of my favorite ones is uh, kid is kids reacting to it. Motley oh, Crue love reacting that. to kids reacting to Motley Crue. Yeah. Tommy watching up, it's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've seen I've seen all the I love that stuff. But yeah. uh, but anyway, let, it, let, let's talk about Kiss. Let's let's get in. Let's talk about Kiss. So we I, are I, talking about Kiss. I, I did I did my research here. I, I was a good student on here. I did my research. So let's talk about before we show our our records, what we have and and cool stuff about this Dynasty record. Let's talk about what was going on. Dynasty came out May twenty third, nineteen seventy nine, and they were planning this tour and they were planning the return to Kiss as far back as December nineteen seventy eight. So even though Kiss said they had a year off. They really didn't. They were doing other things, and they were planning this for a very, very, very long time. It was produced by Vinnie Poncia, who actually produced Peter Chris's solo album. Vinnie Poncia was brought in because Peter at the time was going to quit, and they figured, well, Peter, we're going to use your producer so that way you can you know, participate in the album. And funny enough, Vinnie Poncia was the one that said, Peter, you're not really that good enough to play drums on the record. So we have our very first public, and I say public because it wasn't known at the time, personnel change. We had Bob Kulick and Dick Wagner that were involved in tracks on Destroyer and the studio side of Alive 2, but Anton Fig played drums on this entire Dynasty record, minus the Dirty Living uh, cut. If it's a rainy day out there, or if you're bored, there is a great, it's almost seven hours now, of Kiss actually recording I Was Made For Loving You, Sure Know Something, and Dirty Living on YouTube, where you can hear them in the sessions. Now, Peter was still involved in the sessions at this point because you hear Paul and Peter arguing with each other uh, but it's interesting to hear how those songs were built uh, so anyway, and uh, and if you want to hear an interesting interview with anton fig that i did last year at indy check on our channel check it's on our up. channel check on our channel i talked to him about dynasty a little bit <laughs> so uh, it was recorded and mixed by jay messina at electric lady and record plant studios in new york city in february of 1979 engineered by john mathis and jim galanti you know peter plays drums just on one track the rest is by anton fig and uh, this is the first record that we're going to talk about in the remastered series that has some type of inserts. It's got, you know, that black dust sleeve. It's got a, um, it's got a poster in there, and it's got a, um, a uh, what's we call it, a, a merchandise order form in there. So we'll pull that, st- we'll pull that stuff out later because I'm sure we have <coughs> one of them to show. I mean, this is, you know, in terms of like packaging and bang for your buck, it, this is one of the best ones. It really is. No, it's, it's a good one. It's got it's a good poster, one. It's got order form and all that stuff. So it's, yeah. it, it, it's, it's really, really, really cool. Um, and the chart peak for the United States was number nine, which was in July of 1979. Um, I've showed this on a show before, but since we're talking about Dynasty, I wanted to show my Kiss Army Dynasty sponge that came oh, out yeah. of the disco ball in the middle of the arena. Uh, I should have got that. Tour. And I've got I, one as well. I've never showed this on the show, but I wanted to show a ticket stub that I purchased from the 1979 Madison Square Garden show. This is super, super, super cool. That's pretty cool, super man. Cool. Yeah. And then when I posted this on my Facebook page, a friend of mine, he messaged me and goes, dude, where'd you get that ticket? And I was like, oh, I bought it from Peter Arquette at Kiss Museum. He goes, like, that's my ticket. And I was like, <laughs> no, it's not. He goes, dude, it's my ticket. And it was his ticket. So this this is my friend's ticket, and then it ended up in my collection. So he said he would have given it to me, but obviously I had to pay for it. That's right. <laughs> um, All right. So so there's a bunch of really cool things that, that are, are going on about Dynasty, and there's a really cool commercial that I absolutely love. My favorite version of the commercial is from the Madison Square Garden shows. Also surrounding these Madison Square Garden shows, there were Dial a Kiss hotlines where you call the hotline and listen to a recording. Uh, I'm not going to play these recordings for you here because somebody recorded them through an old telephone, so they're very, very crappy in quality. But how? I mean, those were big at the time. You know, you call up a, a line and you get a pre-recorded message from yes. Kiss. Uh, very, very, very cool. And uh, anyway, what, what do you guys? What, what are what are your what are your memories uh, of all this stuff? Joe, Joe and I are done. Andrew covered it all. Yeah, you got it. You're, you're <laughs> we're all set. 
Yeah, do we want to jump into the albums now? Or, yeah, let's uh, jump into the yeah, albums. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. You you want to start, Jason? You want to start with let's start with the U.S. stuff. I mean, yeah. I've got a couple of things here. I know you have a couple of things. Well, you know, I know you got a lot more than I do, and you know, we can just kind of uh, we'll start out with um, I my original U.S. one. I have a, a promo copy here, Ooh. and if you know anything about plant numbers, um, I, I think think. You know, these are there's markings on the labels that show where uh, you know where a particular record was pressed. Um, the, poster. So anyway, I've got my promotional copy here. Uh, oh no, let's take that away from that. My promotional copy here is from Plant Fifty Six. You probably can't make that out, but it does say, you know, promotional copy not for sale on the label. Uh, I think Joe has another one that he's going to show. I just 20. found an extra sleeve in mine. Do any of you boys That's... need a need a sleeve? No, no, we're good. Thank you. We're good. Um, here is uh, the promotional copy plant twenty five. You guys see that there? Lift it up. There you go. I Let it set. Not see that. Focus. 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 Yeah. focus, focus. Close. Okay. Anyway, Close. plant 25, same as Jason's, just a different marking under the um, side one stereo on the left below the below the label. And we should talk about also the, uh, this is a custom label, mm -hmm. um, one in the series of labels that Kiss did or that Casablanca did that was mm -hmm. um, custom. So you actually have a shot of Dynasty, you know, the Dynasty poster here. Right. Uh, on the and the, the first custom label goes all the way back to 1977's Love Gun. Love Gun was yeah. the first custom label that, is that was true. available that uh, had the band on there, which we'll talk about more in the Love Gun episode. So on the back, you have a gold stamp promo. I don't know if that's... Can you make that out? Nope. There's a gold stamp promo. Check. Yours gold stamped in the top left as well. Mine, mine is gold stamped uh, lower right. Oh, interesting. Mine's and top says, left. it um, says something... For loaned for promotional, uh, loaned for promotion only, not for sale. Ownership and all rights reserved. So there is the. Yep, I think it's the same stamp. Uh, Just different. Is locations. your fifty six in the so, upper left? Different location. Mine is twenty five. No, no, no. Don't you? Didn't you have a fifty six as well? I don't have a fifty six promo. I have a oh. fifty six. I have a plant fifty six. Oh, I see. Promo. I see. Yeah. Hey, so check this out. So this is this says CRC at the bottom here. Nice. But I don't. Shouldn't I see some type of CRC marking on on the actual vinyl? Not always. Not necessarily. I wonder no, if this was a, a mix match because this is a Plant Fifty Six. So I see it's Stamp Fifty Six, um, but I don't see any other markings that would say that it's a, a Columbia House. Yeah. Well, it could it could be a number of things. It could be that um, it was vinyl that they purchased off the label and put in their jackets it could be a frankenstein, be a frankenstein. you know it could be a number of things well so now i have to look for a non-crc 1979 dynasty so here's the inner sleeve if i don't remember if andrew showed it but there's the inner sleeve again a custom inner sleeve for this release it's excellent so it's very right. cool so what do you want to move on to next? Want, what about the poster? Wanna... Have you, we haven't we haven't shown the poster well, yet. So. It, yeah, it, it's really difficult to unravel. So there's a picture of the poster you see on the screen right now that's coming in there, so you can see that. This was always one of my favorite posters. Huge missed opportunity for them not to re-put this on a T-shirt, just this artwork. I know there's a couple there where it has like live stuff on there, but uh, huge missed opportunity. And it's a massive, what is it, four panels, 12 inches, so yeah. it's 48 inches yeah. by 24 inches, or it's just a massive... Awesome. Six, panels. six panels. Is it six panels? Yeah. No, well, yeah, oh, I see, three and, yeah, three and two, yeah. so it's 36 by 24, just a huge, yep. massive poster. So that was I so have... cool. I remember that as a kid, just opening that thing up, and it just seemed as big as I was. It was cool. Yep. So before we get into the proper... Um... <laughs> We're getting into the proper record because I know you guys are showing promos. I got some 12 inch singles here, and this one's kind of unique because uh, this one, this is sealed. This is a Canadian Polydor single side. I was made for loving you 12 inch with a BB hole right here, if you could see that right there. And this, this is sealed. And you're going to... I am not going to open this. Okay. Yeah, I thought <laughs> I that's what you were going to do. No, 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 no. I'm not done. I'm not done. So... 
Um, All right. So this is Don't a, steal his thunder, Jason. No, this Sorry. Is, this is Canadian polygraph, <laughs> but I also have the proper U.S. 12-inch uh, I was made for loving you single. I remember having this as a kid, and I was like, Mommy, Mommy, why is this different than the record? Because it was a different mix of I was made for loving you. So it's got yes. the, the, the single version. There's also a single version of Dirty Living as well that's a little over seven minutes in length. But uh, this is the USA one, A-side, I was made for loving you, 12-inch remix, B-side, Charisma. What is my? Charisma. Neat. <laughs> Very cool. Well, here, i tell What's you a funny next? story about I was made. Please don't. So, do you know the, the little sound the <laughs> "I was made"? To? He tells he tells it anyway. Go yeah, ahead. but you know the yes. little sound when the you know it, yes. the little sound. Yeah. I thought that they would record these in their makeup and costume, and I thought that it was that was their boot sound in I, the studio. I think that's. I think we all thought something like <laughs> that when thought. we were little. I thought you know, it was for their sure. boots. I thought it was their yeah. boots on there. I never did. I knew these were guys in makeup. I don't know what you guys are talking Shut about. Up, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What's up next? Um, I guess I, I just have a common, um, one of the more common, uh, Plant 56 non-promo. It's all the stuff that we've shown before. Yep, Same sort of label, just without the promotional markings. Do you have that as well at 56? Exactly what I have. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep, yep. yep, yep, yep. yep yeah. Plant 56. I don't know. I'll show that real quick here and see if, how does that, is that coming in there? It's not focusing for some reason, but. That's okay. We're going to have some drop-ins later. Yep. We'll drop this in. All right. Here's that one. Um. So it, next, I have. What are we calling these? Are we calling these FilmWorks twos? <clears throat> what is that? What do you have? So this is a FilmWorks two, the eighty three, eighty four. This has a five hundred one in the in the upper corner right there. If you see that, <laughs> the cellophane <laughs> is still on this. So the cellophane has only been opened where the record came out of. So I have the the. This is a polygram label. It's not as faded as some of the other 84, 83, 84s. But this was, I got this from the original owner. So this is, this is what the label looks like on this one. Yeah, that's nice and, that's nice and crisp. Mm -hmm. And then I just came in one of these. But, but again, this, the shrink is still on this. So I don't see, there is no, and, and even like there's a Caldor Records sticker. Caldor was a chain in New right. Jersey that I used to shop at. Caldor, there's still a sticker on there. So this this has been on there since since the 80s. So no barcode sticker on the back? No barcode sticker on the back at all. Okay. No barcode. And and the barcode, I don't know if you could see this, but if you see these, the, these little lines are perforated. So the barcode was in the middle of here, and it was taken off. That's gotcha. where the barcode was. Got it. Interesting. Okay. So that's, a, that's an eighty-three, eighty-four. My opinion. Do you guys agree or disagree? Uh, as far as I know, that's an eighty-three, eighty-four. Yes. yes. Even yeah, though, yeah. even though I have other eighty-three, eighty-fours, and when you put the eighty, when you put the polygram twos next to the polygram threes, um, you could tell that the the polygram twos, the labels are faded. They're definitely faded. Hmm. Now, did you say that it's CRC on it? No, Andrew? CRC was on my my 1979 proper. Oh, got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And it was just a CRC got on it. Because that's what I've got here as well. I've got a Plant 56 CRC with the CRC down in the lower corner. I can show that real quick. And no, C and no CRC on the label, correct? Correct. And that's exactly yeah. what mine is. That's what Andrew showed. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. so okay. it looks cool. like I just need to get a um a, a 1979 a proper, non CRC. A yeah. Proper stock uh, copy. Yeah. Correct. All right. So I'm looking to see. If there's no. There's no CRC. Uh, nope. Okay. So here's here's why I'm certain that this is a polygram two. No barcode. No. There's nothing. the The jacket is virtually aside from the 501. The jacket is virtually identical to the 1979. Because this is a polygram three 1985. A couple things I want to call out. Number one, there's a barcode up at the top. And you see there's the Polygram logo down at the bottom. See that? Mm -hmm. Yep. Now, gentlemen, this is sealed. I would not open it. Joe? You want to know why? Why? Because there's nothing in it other than a record. What would you You're do, Joe? I would not open it. Okay. I would not. I am, open it. I'm gonna... Can you show me the back of that again, please? Yep. Can you yep. flip that around? Yep. So the back again, you see the the barcode up there. 
And then yep. you see at the bottom down here, you see the Polygram logo. That is not yep. on the 1979 or the 8384 Polygram 2. Yep, so that's a that's a Filmworks 3. That's correct. I've, I've got a Plant 72 with the UPC, so I think we have the same we have the same copy here, Andrew. And there yep. is nothing in it. Yep. There's right, the barcode. So I'm going to keep it. Here's what, the, here's what that label looks like. It's probably got a, does it have a clear plastic? Uh, no, it's got a white. In well, it. but th this is, I think, a, this is a, you know, uh, inserted later sleeve. Got so it. that's not. Yeah. So there's the label that's on that. That's what it looks guy. like, Andrew. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. That looks a little more faded than than mine, but I guess I'd, I would need to. So it looks like, yeah, it looks a little bit more faded than my film works, too. It's definitely not very vibrant, for sure. Yeah, that's weird. That's yeah. weird. I've always thought the 85s were more faded than the 82, 83s. Yeah, that's indicative of the, of the 85s. So do I just have them flipped? Is that what I... You have them flipped, have them flipped. yes. Okay, I'm, my apologies. Yeah. So yeah. Um, just, to, just, to, just to reiterate a little bit, we have our promos, which could be Plant 25, Plant 56. Then we have our regular 1979s, which we've shown the regular one, and then a, a CRC. Then we have our Filmworks 2, which is 83, 84, and our Filmworks 3, which is 85. So basically, we have four versions of this record total in the U.S. We all in agreement? No, on that? no, we're not in agreement. D don't, don't. Uh, we still we haven't even talked about 2014 yet. I, I, well, I, I was gonna I, get. It to Doesn't that. matter. It's still a U.S. So. I was gonna get to that. Yeah. I was gonna get to that. So we, uh, aside from the 2014, which I was just gonna mention, that we have four versions of Dynasty on vinyl in the U.S. Are we in agreement in the, on that? The pressings in the eight, 85 and prior. Correct. Yes, correct. You, that would be a correct statement. Yeah. Damn, stealing my thunder as always. Jason, God. Well, you made a definitive statement. There I, are four records in the U.S., I didn't no? finish my <laughs> damn statement. And then we have the 2014, which is basically, <laughs> which is basically a, a really great representation of the 1979 proper version with the same label on there. And it's got the same picture sleeve. And it also came with the same poster. I'm sure I'm like many KISS fans when I say there were some records I was really looking forward to when the two four, 2014s were re-released. And man, to be able to open that poster as an adult like I did when I was a little kid when I tore the shrink off that thing and unfolded it, it you know, it, it rockets you back whatever it was, the 30 years or whatever it was prior to the you know that stuff coming out it was it was it, those were cool times to be able to open those 2014s and see that they had taken the care because we had that back to black alive Ugh. and we were all petrified that that was going to be the quality of the release and they you yep. know we, we were we were scared and man when those things started to roll out and the quality of those covers mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all Except the inserts, souls well but we all know the story behind that yes. but in any event yes the the reproduction of them was they were lovingly done Heck yeah. and impeccably done. Heck yeah. Great materials. They were they were great releases. So yeah. I was super excited to be able to open that version. I the, tipped the, my hat to 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 all those. The first two that I got when I started buying twenty fourteens was Dynasty and Unmasked for the posters. I don't, I don't remember me, you know, because when the first blast came out yeah, you ordered I, 16 copies of each. I and, just, I just got them all you, in my you, cart. Yeah, and, you got them all in your cart. They're probably still in the cart. You got some nope. that got shipped to you, some mm -hmm. that you had this like this bunker storage unit that you and Danny Dabs go to all the time and just rub your hands together. We have all this extra stuff in here, and you, you guys it's just... Anyway. I, I smell a tinge of jealousy. I'm not jealous because I like Danny <laughs> Dabs a lot. We talk about <laughs> adventures. <laughs> But no, that the 2014s, uh, and I've said it a million times on this uh, podcast since the beginning, are some of my very favorite pressings of the records, including the mastering uh, that was done on the audio. It was superbly done, mm -hmm. superbly done. Yep. So, yeah. And as good as they look, they sound even better. So. I agree That's right. with you. I agree with you. Yeah. I agree with you. Amazing. So I don't have Actually. Dynasty from any other country. Good. Does that mean you get to be quiet for a little bit? Yes. <laughs> I'm just teasing, man. I'm just. Teasing. I'm not. No more impressions. No more talking. <laughs> We're just giving you. Hey, if you can, if you can, poke listen, to me. I'm listen, poking back. Listen, listen. <laughs> See, he can't not talk. Go ahead. I'm gonna make Stacy have you clean that damn room. <laughs> man, I'll give you a hundred dollars if you can make her make me clean this room. No, I'm just going to come there and I'm going to clean the room and then I'm going to take Dude, a bunch of stuff that you won't even you're know what in, I took because you have no idea anytime. what's in there. You have no idea what's in there. All right. So, so let's how, move on. 
Yeah, the, the international pressings. Jason, yes. do you have anything right off the top that you want to show? I've got something here. Well, what do you think? Beat me to it. If you want to beat me to it, I don't care. I can beat you to it. Um, I've got a French uh, Vogue copy. Well, do you, uh, guys, do you guys know if I make this statement, this is correct or not? We, we're getting to a point where the international releases are usually around the same time as the um, initial U.S. release. And what I mean by that is those first couple Japanese records didn't come out in Japan until much later. Right. So you have these uh, that are and coming out. you got the out. UK. Yeah, the UK you have these with coming out. Delays. They're yeah. all around the same time in May of 1979, May, June well, 1979. Well, this is certainly a 1979 record. Yes. I don't know what date it came out, but it uh, was that yeah, year for Yeah, sure. I, I don't know that either, but I'm saying that they're, they're, it's, pretty, it's around the, the May release. Yeah, because I still consider the U.S. release the proper release, U.S. band, U.S. Sure. record. That's sure. Yeah, sure. So All right, Vogue, what do you got, Joe? Vogue France. Um, Vogue. Here is the, the back cover. Can you see that? And Jason's voguing while we're doing this. That's yeah. good. Nobody wants to see that. So there yes. you go. Some some additional markings. <laughs> some additional markings down here. Okay. So that it's a Vogue. Here's what's interesting to me. And now, it. I don't. It's. I don't know. I don't know what to make of this. So this has a more of a paper-like oh, sleeve. Oh yeah, and it looks like it's, it's more of a matte, matte finish. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a matte finish, and I think they. I don't know. I so I wonder about the authenticity of this. If this is how this came out, or if, is this Frankenstein with something else? Is um, there any other uh, mark? What what does it say at the top of, of the sleeve yeah. on the? It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't match anything else. Oh, hmm. that's that's wrong. It does. It's uh, CB seven one zero four nine. There you go. And there is the marking on the top of the jacket. So there you go. My, my fears have been allayed. There you go. So there's that. Good deal. Yeah. So I and that was interesting. I hadn't I hadn't seen that before. And then here's the label. Um, it looks very similar to the U.S. label. It is similar. There's just some other little. I don't know if you can see that there or not, but mm -hmm. oh yeah, 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 yeah. There's some different markings on that 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 show that it's a Vogue pressing. And what's cool about this one too is I won't show it here, but there is a Vogue logo on the poster as well oh. in the in the bottom center of the poster. So okay. it was not a U.S. Um, centric poster that was in here, or you know a, an overrun with the U.S. It was actually a French version of it as well. Mm -hmm. Jason, you want to go? Yep, I'll go next. Uh, okay. Sorry that I'm opening this on the air. I know. Do you have the not... same bags on all your records? While you do that, Jason, let me just show this real quick. Did we show the 2014? And the 14 the... Hype sticker. We did not show the hype sticker. The no. hype sticker. There's the sealed version with the hype on that. Yep. And it so... says uh, 180 gram audiophile vinyl. First U.S. pressing since 1985, Andrew. There you go. That's the year I was born. Yep. All right, so I've, uh, I'm going to I'm going to show uh, Argentina. Uh, anybody want to take a crack at the name? Dynastia. That's I've always Dynastia. loved these. Yeah, it's it's Dynastia. great. I've it's, yeah, it's really cool. All of the titles in back. Spanish are Spanish. Very cool. C C C C C C. No. No. So and Donde this. La biblioteca. Oh yeah. As, as we know. South American vinyl, I love yeah. it, but the materials used, I mean, I, I don't know if you can tell, but just the just the quality of the photo itself yeah. is is very bizarre, but it's very, very thin. Um, they almost but, look photocopied. They almost they look color copied. They, oh, uh, yeah. and it's so funny you mentioned that, Joe, because uh, Pablo, our good friend who is you know an original Kiss My Wax admin, just showed a copy, and I think it was on microphone um, from down there, uh, the label, uh, or microphone, microphone, I think it is. Um, he showed a copy of Love Gun, and in the upper right-hand corner, you can see where the, RC. the album cover was photo photocopied from a promo copy because oh. it has the, the jagged cut out of it. it. It's printed into the... Oh, I, I saw that now. Yeah, and he was yeah. saying that it's even cut a little short. Right. right? He had the red stripe showing where right. the where the cut should. But yeah, if, you look, if you look in the corner of it, you can see where they basically just took a a cut corner promo copy and photocopied it, and it's photocopied into the into the cover. 
So right, right. Uh, this is the sleeve that it comes in, and this is an actual. Um, oh, that's great. Yeah. Yep. Actual phonogram actual company. Yeah. Phonogram sleeve. Yep. And this is the label. Filmworks label. Can't see it. Way too much of a glare. Nah, there you go. Not. You got it now. Yeah, Dennis Dia. Filmworks label. Dennis Dia. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So it's a cool piece, and and Pablo got this for me, and I, I appreciate it greatly. I uh, love it. So, and you'll uh, also you'll also often see those very flimsy plastic sleeves. Man, don't keep the flimsy. vinyl in the in the sleeve. Take that out of the sleeve, man. It's not gonna make a difference. Yeah, they're they're so beat yeah, up anyway. Just, just, so, yeah, so then just shove it in there and just. <laughs> All right, I'm not putting that back in the sleeve. Don't put so. that in there. What do you got, Joe? What's next? So, while you're wrestling with that one, I will show uh, Columbia. Again, Andrew, to your point, 1979 is the year here. The code is 26022, and you know that because it's right on the cover. Can you see that? Oh, yeah, right up top. See it right on the top there? So um, this is a um, white Filmworks label. So it's, a, it's another. If you don't take that out of the jacket, I'm going to quit. If I don't take it out? Yeah. Good. You're quit. You quit then. <laughs> Finally, we got rid of him. He's out. <laughs> Off he goes. Yeah, a little bit of a glare there, but there's the idea. So white film works. Looks like a, again, like a photocopy. Um, and it says it's it's interesting on this one because the cover says Dynasty with the U.S. or the English, and on the back it's Dynasty, Dynasty in quotes or in interesting hmm. and, and kiss. Yeah. And yeah. then all the the label is in Spanish as well on that one. Very, very good. Hey, whoa, what kind of label is that? White, white Filmworks. Oh, White Filmworks. That's right. You just showed that. So yeah. from yeah. a distance, it looked like a... It, it just looked odd to me. From Whoa, a whoa, everybody slow down. <laughs> slow down. Whoa. Stay in your lane. Slow what down. What have you got please. there? Slow down. All right, I'll okay, show which... next, since it's not too remarkable. These, these were released in the early 80s, I believe. Uh, that didn't even have a sleeve in it. So this is the... The West German copies with oh, the great. altered logo. I believe this series ran in 80, 81 or something like that when, when they altered the logo, I think. So um, there's that. These had no inserts in them. There's the label. Yeah. In fact, this doesn't even have a sleeve in it. I need to get one that has a sleeve. So just, there's that one. Just like wrestling, just dumping things inside each other. <laughs> Okay, so now here's one. I'm going to take this out for the sake of not Andrew, but our faithful viewers. So this is <laughs> this is Columbia. Um, controversial one, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, and I'd like to get your guys' opinion on this one. Columbia, same code, 262022. Um, and there's been some discussion about this blood tier Colombian version, right? Correct. So... If you compare this, and I'm going to get to the controversy in just a second. You see that code at the top? Yeah. Yep. You see how it's stamped there? Yeah. Yep. You see how off register it is, and it's blurry and bleeding yeah. all yeah, over yeah. the place? I do. Okay. I do. So we talk about this as being a variation. It, it has become a variation of sorts, right? So, right. so I think Sebastian Bach or somebody came it out. Was and said it was Sebastian. Yeah. Was it Sebastian? Yeah, came out and said it's the Medellin Tear of Blood Gene Simmons version, right? Right. So if you look at Gene's eyes here, you see how red and bloodshot yeah. they look. Yeah. There are some that are more pronounced than that. There are some that are less pronounced than that. For my money, this is a pr this is just a printing error. Yes. You know, it's, it, I, and I don't know whether, so uh, oftentimes we don't say mm. that printing variations are not, they're, they're not variants, right, that people would want to collect. This to me, at some point in the run, just got out of register and how you can tell is aside from the aside from the stereo and code up here you see all the the red or sorry the blue bleeding yeah, I, around i see, yeah, that I, blue. I see the yep. blue bleeding around the white yeah this thing is just misregistered so if you took that blue plate and you slid it over that red in his eyes goes away and becomes Interesting. a different color so i don't know what to do with this it's been it's been called a different variant Variation, I don't know. I'm going with it's not. It's I would go that it's not. I would go that it's not. the The only reason, the only printing error that I would call a variation is the teardrop rock and roll over because that's specific to those Columbia records, 
um, well, the Columbia Record House Rock and Roll Locals. Well, where they you, have the Paul you don't you, you don't even have to differentiate it in that manner because it's already a variant in its own right. I mean, it's it's a different version. It's it's the you know it's the right. is it it's not Columbia. It's RCA. It? RCA music. R- I'm sorry. RCA. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. So it's it's RCA. It, so it's its own variant, and it's you know, and there's no variant within itself. So there's not a quote unquote teardrop and quote unquote without teardrop. So right. Right. We don't and have to so worry about it. here's the flip yeah. label right side up on that guy. So we have a Filmworks there, and we have um, you know, the Spanish labels, and so it's essentially the same label in color um, as the as the previous version I showed. That was the white, very the cool white Filmworks version. All right, so there's that, Jason. Okay. Uh, back and forth. I will show the picture disc from the Netherlands. Dutch. Is that the Dutch picture disc? That's the Dutch picture disc. Yes, sir. This is one of the tougher ones to find and more expensive when you do find it. It's got that on one side and it's, it's got number. this on the other. And mine Andrew, is... you want to ask the you want to ask the question you always ask about these picture discs? Well, this one's numbered, so I know this one is legit. Is it real? Yeah. Is it real? <laughs> this one is numbered. This one is real. Uh, as what I know, always we... ask. I asked it one time on the last episode because there <laughs> one are one out of one is always. There are there <laughs> are uh, you know, unofficial printings of that with when That's they're not correct. numbered. Yeah, and we've covered that before, and it has to do with the dead wax. Um, right. The etching is either machine stamped or handwritten, and handwritten is counterfeit, correct? I believe that is the belief, yes. Yeah, so, well, so you, can, you, you, you can have unnumbered overruns of these that are still official. So Correct, yeah, and those are, we believe, machine machine stamped. Correct, correct. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. What do you got next? Um, I've got this one. So these are getting rarer and tougher now as we kind of go on here. Let me take this one out too because it's a little bit different. This is Ecuador. Um, LP28522. Um, and again, very flimsy. You know, same. Yes, very flimsy. I don't think it's as flimsy as maybe the one you were just showing because it still feels like it has a little bit of that that plastic waxiness to it. Yeah. Um, but it's got the, if you can see it there. Mm-hmm. Nice. It's not a sticker. It's actually printed. Oh wow. So that's it's flat there, and then there's another marking up here. And that's printed as well. That is that is printed as well. Yep. No. There. Yeah. It's not raised at all. What country again? I missed it. Ecuador. This is Ecuador. Ecuador. Yep. Yep. Could do. Um, yeah, and I can guarantee that the inner sleeve I have with it is not the original inner sleeve because it is a right along with America's top composers. <laughs> <laughs> so this is somehow, yeah. yeah. Oh, you talk about a crazy Frankenstein. There you go. So then here's the back of this one. So all the titles um, in Spanish, um, very different looking back cover. Can you guys see that? Yep. Very, very different looking. Yeah. Different layout, different font, the whole thing. Um, and then some record company markings down there at the bottom. So that's Ecuador. This one's a really tough one to find. Um, the label is the label's the same. It's in Spanish. Um, and then you have the LP28522 mm-hmm. marking on it as well. I, I know what you're looking for, Jason, because you're looking... There are, I believe there are three variations of Dynasty. There's the from Japan, there's uh, as far as the obi go, there's the crazy collection, then there's the yellow obi, and then the red obi. No, no, no. I was looking at the variations of the red obi because there will be there should be one that talks about premiums and should be one that does Doesn't, not talk, does about, not talk premiums. about premiums. I understand. I know the you know the the Polydor pressings and the crazy mm-hmm. collection. I don't have those to show, but I'm trying to see, make sure that I have a first print in here. <clears throat> to talk about what came with it so all right uh so i'm gonna show dynasty from japan there you go it's and beautiful. this this is the um first pressing obi as far as i can tell and the and we know that because we look in the great book kiss in japan by alan belisha sold out get that on a secondary market there are three printings available uh, but what right. he's talking about is on the obi if it was an original release it talks about premiums that came with Correct. the record Right, and as I'm looking in Alan's book, since we mentioned it, um, just talked to Alan yesterday. Uh, yeah, great. So there was a there was a poster that was offered with it, um, 
I think it's I think it's point of purchase. I would have to read so just like to be sure. So it's like the logo poster, the point of purchase. Yeah. yeah. So it's oh, so cool there. But uh, but also what was <coughs> I gotta go on is... eBay now and look for that. Good luck. That's a tough. That's a tough one to find, and it's hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Hundreds sure. and hundreds of dollars. Yeah. So this you may think is the inner sleeve, mm -hmm. but it's not. But you'd be wrong. It's the booklet. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and then what's great is that it's it's got the poster inside the booklet. Very cool. So, um, I always love this, and and it's also, you know, this is also the the lyric booklet as well. So, but it's just a, a beautifully done piece, and here is the label. And this thing has never been touched. Ooh, you just touched it. That's very Bio, cool. By a stylus. Yeah, it's a very, very, very nice piece. So, um, I unfortunately do not have any other, bless you, do not have any other, I don't have the Polydor yellow obies or the... Um, or the crazy collection, you know, black and yellow obis. Do you have any of those from Japan? I, I don't. This is, I my Japanese vinyl stops at double platinum. Gotcha. What about you, Joe? Do you have? Do I have any of them, period? Or... Any of them, period. Yes, I do. I do have a couple. I have a couple of the crazy collection. Um, I, I don't, uh, I mean, are you talking, you're talking oh, about you, Dynasty? You don't have Dynasty? Gen no, not Dynasty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dynasty. I thought you were talking no, 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 speak. sorry. Yeah, and, and didn't Not, Alan yeah. discover that there are also promotional copies of the Crazy Collection once? There, that is the word on the street that there are Crazy Collection promos and they're crazy rare. I've never seen. I've never even seen one come up. Yeah. So, what else do you have on your side? I've got one more. I've got. Um, El I got Sal two more. I've got El Salvador. Do you want to show one? And then do you have the. Yeah, why don't you show one and then I was gonna show, yeah that I was gonna show the the colored vinyl from the yep, original. Great, box. that's great. Yep. So um, if I can get to it now, those are matte sleeves as well, right, Jason? Those are matte, more papery kind of sleeves in that uh -huh. box. Yeah, they are definitely they are definitely matte. Yeah, yeah. That, that's matte. why I was I kind of had that weird feeling when the Vogue when I picked up the Vogue was like was that inner sleeve? Wow, I just noticed. Dynasty is the last record in here, and it sits on the back of this thing. Mm -hmm. Can you see that white line? Oh, man. It's just from sitting in that box. The weight. I, I wonder how weight. much of your collection is damaged because other stuff is sitting on top of it. I don't have anything sitting on my vinyl. My vinyl is sitting in crates. But I mean, but like, this, is, this is in a box. You, like, you know, unless you take it out of the box, there's it's nothing being you can compressed do. all the time, I, man. I'm, I just, I, I just. Sickening. You can you can you just, but my vinyl collection is in crates, in that you can flip through. So, um, just white like vinyl. anybody's, this it's a white vinyl. That is really cool. I love that white vinyl. Yeah, yeah I I mean, there's a bunch of these on eBay right now. They're all going between nine hundred and twelve hundred bucks. I think there's four of them on eBay right now. I yeah. think you can get a better deal than nine hundred bucks. I I paid four hundred for mine. Mm. But how many years ago I, was that? I, I paid four hundred for mine, but it was at a Kiss convention in so Jersey. So it was mine. And I I got out of there like I was being chased. I thought, holy crap, this is the <laughs> biggest deal of the of the day that anybody's going to get on this thing, I or on, on anything in the show. It was it was crazy. I I think right now that's a thousand dollar item. Do you really? A I do. One? I do. I do a black one. I think I think the. I mean, you might find it a little less. Let's 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 compromise on this. It's seven fifty to a thousand all day long. Now, if a red one comes up, that's twenty five hundred bucks. Easy, 20, easy. Twenty two hundred. Do either one of you have a red one? No, no, no. Do do I d I don't think I know, but maybe two people, two or three people that have them. I mean, obviously, there's more than that, but I, I personally know of two or three people that own them. They're they're tough, mm -hmm. tough. All right, your last one. You want me to do my last one, or you want to do the last one? Uh, I'll do my last one here. I've got El Salvador, um, similar to the others that we've shown, except for the back is is different yet again. These these, um, these some of these foreign pressings take a lot of liberties with the back of these. There's the NBL P seven one five two there in the lower corner, so that's a little bit different. And then on the back, so the rest of the cover is the same. Mm -hmm. Then on the back, it's different. It's all in black. Yeah. Oh wow! That, I actually kind of like that. That's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah it's it interesting. Is, it is cool. Then the um, 
I don't have the inner sleeve on it or it was so beat up that it, that it was gotten done away with. Um, there is the film works. Up. Up. There you oh, go. Label. There you go. Yep. Can you see that? Yep. Sort of. Okay. So that's it for me. Ecuador, another really tough one to find. So it yeah. kind of, this kind of follows along my pattern of, um, trying to find the most expensive or rarest version of each of these. Like I said, it's a, it's an unfortunate sickness. I have these records, right. but I find the, the rarest ones I can and go after those. So, um, and dynasty is one of the ones that I collect fairly often, you know, I, outside of the, the big three that, I, that I'm looking at right now, dynasty would be the next one out of the bunch. Very nice. All right. I have one more to show. And, uh, I want to mention that it doesn't appear that any, either any of us have, uh, any of the 2014 European releases, outside of german so i co- made a conscious effort to not chase those mm-hmm. um although I have to. that's yeah, probably it's probably a mistake but you know i made the conscious decision not to just simply because it, it was the whole catalog and i'm having to buy the whole catalog plus kisteria plus i wanted the german versions so yep. and the german versions are so substantially different that it felt mm-hmm. like okay those are the ones right that, you know right. if you're going to collect some that are different then you have two you know, two different versions there. That's exactly right. So, uh, I feel, I feel like that maybe one day I'll, I'll start trying to grab the, you know, the European versions and all the ones that are out of print are just going to be super expensive. And And who knows, maybe they'll come back into print. You never know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, so this anyway, week, this week you found out that Peter, Chris, and Paul Stanley U.S. are back in print. That's right. I just got notified by Universal. So, and a so lot this, of people who paid eighty bucks for those records on eBay or otherwise are very disappointed with that yep, news. They and are. Who are trying to sell them out there are disappointed for sure. They sure are. So this is the uh, the German version, two thousand fourteen, and the reason why I want to show it um, is because, because it came with a download card. It did come with a download card. It did. So, but that's and the, Europe, and the Europeans do as well, right? They also that so is the, correct. The Germans and the Europeans came with a download voucher card, and the in the yeah. U.S. pressings did not. So the reason why I want to show it is because, I you know, uh, many years ago I went out and collected all of the West German versions, you know, that came out in eighty eighty one or something like that, and they were uh, just a budget line essentially. They had no inserts. Mm-hmm. There was they were yeah. not substantial at all. But when they repressed these in 2014, they really went all out. So here is the sleeve replicated yeah. with it's awesome with yeah, the that's, altered that's logo. Cool. Yep, and the poster and it has is. it too. Yeah. Don't steal my thunder, man. Don't steal his too thunder, man. Andrew. <laughs> yeah. So I'll and stay these, in my lane. <laughs> these sleeves are uh, yeah substantial. Substantial, um, and it's even on the label. That's so cool. Yeah, it's so cool, man. Again, it goes back to the detail we were talking about before. They just didn't do the U.S. versions that way. They took their time, and anywhere the KISS logo was on any of the inserts, um, they, they just did an amazing job on the labels, the whole thing. Agreed. Now, as Andrew pointed out, and this, these posters are substantial too, but the logo on the poster is also... Yeah, you can't see it. You can't see no. that? I can see it. Yeah, this is the edited version with the with the oh, backwards yeah, Z's. Yeah. I see it now. Yeah. yeah. So it's just so so cool. So if if you were ever on the fence about buying the the German versions of these records, go out and yeah, get them. And get especially it. especially the ones that have the the inserts and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, Alive Two, Dynasty, Unmasked, yes. and probably even Love Gun too. Probably the logo on the Love Gun has changed as well. So you know, yeah, you they wanna... they altered they altered the the logo on all of the Did inserts. You say unplugged. The unplugged one is so cool because oh, they yeah, have yeah, the, yeah, they yeah. have the poster inside there as well. Yep, it has the. Hey, I'm I looking for a, a yellow. Uh, while we're talking about unplugged, I'm looking for a yellow uh, vinyl of unplugged. I'm missing that in my in my collection. If anybody has one, let me know. That's a cool, cool one to have. So, um, let's see. So that's all the vinyl that everybody has. Yeah, we did. We didn't mention, and this is kind of one of those: is this a variation? Is this not a variation? Is it a printing error? There is a U.S. version that crops the front photo differently. That you see more of the straight jackets, and you kind of see more of like the edges of their hair. So they pop up on eBay every now and then. They're very, very tough to come by. They're very expensive when someone knows that they're on there. Uh, yes. I, I last time I saw one on eBay was probably over two years ago, and I was in a bidding war on it. So. Um, 
Have you have you you have one, don't you, Jason? Or did you have one? I do one? not. I, I do don't not, have I don't. one either. I, I would you know, there's no way to hypothesize on how many are out there or what or the, how it even the happened. Print, how it right. even happened or what was going on there. But what I will say is it it feels like it's even a tougher I, I don't know if you guys would agree with this or not, but that a live two misprint and that misprint I, I got to tell you, I think almost maybe the Dynasty straight jacket one is even a tougher one to find because I think it's... Oh, it's way tougher to find. Yeah, it's less... Well, for sure, it's less known. So people don't put it up and go, hey, this is the misprint. A lot of people True. know that there's the Alive 2 misprint. So a lot of times you'll just see it without people even knowing what they have. And and it's not a glaring thing either. It's just a little edge of the straight jacket on the left side of the... On the left side of the... Um, you know, it's a re- recrop of the photo. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a tough one. It's yeah, tough. You wonder if, how it if, happened. If, right. If you want to know what it looks like, I believe almost all of the U S eight tracks have yes, you're uncropped correct. photo. You, you're, so you're correct. you can see what that looks like. And, uh, yes, you're correct. You know, it just shows more of those straight jackets before we wrap up. I do want to show this wonderful promotional item. Very cool. The dynasty triangle. And that would have hung from the ceiling, Jason. Is that I how that worked? I, or was that I, a was that a counter display? It's a counter display because it doesn't have any holes in it. But if you look at some uh, photos, some candid photos from the in stores back then, you can yeah. tell that someone took tape and stuck it on one side and stuck them to the wall. Oh my god! You know, Got and it. they stick out like that. So, Got it. Um, so you know, they just you know, it's promotional materials. You know, that's there's there was an art to that at one point in time. Whenever field marketing reps would go into stores, they would build displays, sure. and you know, I did it when I was working in record stores. I did and, it for movie uh, stores. That's right. That's what I wanted to. I wanted to be a field marketing rep when I graduated college with my music business degree, and then that kind of all went away whenever the music industry tanked in the in the mid two thousands. You know, mm-hmm. so but anyway, that's. Super hard to find. One of my choice pieces in my collection, um, promotional item. There's plenty of other cool, cool items out there. But um, I, I think there's a there's another cube or something like that that has Dynasty on one panel, and mm-hmm. a couple of uh, maybe Blondie or something on the other oh, panels or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I well, don't I mean, have let's, that. Let's but... throw it to the listeners. What do you have as far as Dynasty promotional yeah. materials go? I know there's a couple posters, there's a couple of you know cardboard yes. things that are out there. Um, there, one of the things that a lot of people don't mention is there is a German Dynasty poster that was printed in West German. It's just the album cover is Kiss Dynasty, but there's a poster that came in the Dynasty order form that is an actual poster of the the Dynasty Four Faces. I know you have it back there. Yep, I've got it as well. This one? Yep, that, that one. Yes, sir. Yep, it's very cool. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Yeah. It's a cool piece. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. Please, you know, I have my Dynasty promotional. <laughs> I have my Dynasty promotional poster and and all of that stuff, but please, yeah, yeah you know, post that stuff wherever you're viewing this episode right now. What vinyl listening. do you have that we don't have? Show yeah. us, show us the stuff. We'd love to see it. We wanna, we yeah. wanna get your comments and yeah. Yeah, I'm Let's I'm light on Australian pressings and New Zealand pressings and, you know, there's there's just pressings all over the world that, I mean, yeah, and and this I, I think it bears bears talking about just for a second that this is when. The, the KISS marketing train was in full force. So yeah, this this record, there might be more copies of this record than than almost any of the other records, period, around the world. There's mm-hmm. just tons of them. Yeah. Different variations in all these different countries around right. the world. So it's if you're shooting to, to get all of the Dynasty vinyl Don't. from around the world, it is a long and uh, tortured affair, that's for sure. So Bless you again, Andrew. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Fellas, That's is it. that it for Dynasty? The 1979 Return of Kiss, the Dynasty album. What do you think about it? Let's hear your feedback. I, I like feedback. it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. I do yeah. too. It's great. I think it's a great record. You can put it on any, any time, and it's not you know it's not all that challenging. So yep. it's good. All right. Fellas, good job. That's it. Hey, good Same job. to you. Good job. All right. So if that's all, we'll see you. We'll see you on the next one. <laughs>